Before we begin, let's go over a quick review of some of the features in the Zoom webinar space so all attendees can navigate and participate without a problem. When typing a comment or question in the chat box, please set it to all panelists and attendees. We encourage lots of lively discussion in the chat box throughout the webinar. Please go ahead and introduce yourself and share in the chat box where you're joining from if you haven't already. And please type in your questions and comments. We will try our best to address all questions as we go along. Also, please note that we are on Facebook Live. For those of you joining us through Facebook Live, feel free to add your comments and questions there as well. Also, you're welcome to share about the event on social media channels using the hashtags, hashtag VPE2021 or hashtag IRN and hashtag IRNUSA. We are recording this webinar and we'll be sharing it in a follow-up email to all of your presenters. However, feel free to also visit our website, YouTube or Facebook page to watch it again. For those of you new to IRN, I'd love to share briefly about the work that we do. The International Education and Resource ne Network, IRN, is the world's largest K through 12 educational network that enables schools, teachers, and students to connect online and collaborate on projects that connect classroom learning with real world issues. IRN was established in 1988 as a pilot project between 12 schools in New York and 12 schools in Moscow during the height of the Cold War. In the first collaborative project, students worked in both English and Russian on curriculum-based projects designed by participating teachers. They used the technologies available at the time, before the internet, of course, to communicate with one another and build friendships. Our international network has grown exponentially since 1988 as has our ability to connect online and collaborate. Last project year, we connected over 27,000 teachers and almost 70,000 students from 116 countries and global projects. As you see, there are nearly 100 projects in IEARN, all designed and facilitated by teachers and students to fit their curriculum and classroom needs and schedules. IRN projects are interdisciplinary and connect learners across different age groups, primarily kindergarten through 12th grade and different subject areas, including creative and language arts, social sciences and STEM. Participants select an online project and look at how they can integrate it into their classroom. Teachers and students connect with their global peers in online forum spaces to meet one another and collaborate on projects. In addition to connecting students learning with local issues and meeting specific curriculum needs, every project proposed by teachers and students in IRN has to answer the question, how will this project improve the quality of life on the planet? The vision and purpose is the glue that holds IRN together enabling participants to become global citizens who make a difference by collaborating with their peers around the world. In 2015, IRN mobilized its global network to realize the world's new 17 Sustainable Development Goals, also now known as SDGs, a set of targets relating to future international development. Through collective, sorry, through collective learning and action, youth are making a difference through IRM projects that meet the global SDGs, such as ending poverty, protecting the planet, and ensuring prosperity for all. We are very excited today to showcase five different IRM projects during this exhibition. We will start with our KOSKO, or knowing our students, knowing ourselves, future teachers, alphabets of the world, finding solutions to hunger, coronavirus, and ending off 
with our host today, My Hero Learning Circles. We have our special guest joining us today to serve as our host and introduce each of the presentations. I'd like to welcome our students and the teacher, Lumenita Chululuk, and her students, Florentina, Sanda, Christina, Vlad, and Gabriel from Mihai Iminiscu Lyceum in Edenet, Moldova. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope everyone has a great day and enjoy our wonderful webinar. I will now hand it over to Florentina to kick off our event. Hello, Florentina. Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, hello, I am Florentina Scutaro, and I am delighted to introduce the first presentation. Uh, in the cost of future teachers, or knowing our students, knowing dialogue about how to transform school environments so that they will better serve all students. Uh, COSCO is designed uh, to strengthen teacher preparation programs in a variety of content uh, areas, including the integration of technology in the curriculum, language arts, teaching uh, methodologies, and teaching English as a second language. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, today we'll be hearing from Professor Laura Hauerwas in, in Rhode Island in the United States and Professor Sayuri Hashigawa in Tokyo, Japan and their students. Uh, Professor Hauerwas and Hashigawa have, been, have each been in IEARN for three years. Uh, next slide. And with that, uh, I will now hand it to, over to Professor to Professor Hawa Wallace and Hashigawa. Thank you for the introduction, Florentina from Moldova. Hello, everyone. My name is Sayuri Hasegawa, and I'm honored and grateful to be here with my partner, Professor Laura Hauerwas, and five of our future teacher students. And who are we? My students were fourth year teacher education students in the course practical English communication, and Dr. Harawa's students were first year students in communication development and disorders course. Participating in Costco Future Teachers was to model global learning and teaching for them. We wanted our students to develop global perspectives through their project, creating their dream school of the future that advocates for global inclusive education and communication diversity. Hello. I am Laura Hauerwas. Our project together involved four phases. In phase one, students were introduced to I Earn, wrote I Am From poems, and met each other on Zoom. In the second phase, students interviewed educators from around the world to learn more about language education, global learning, and inclusive practices for students with disabilities. In phase three, Students worked in groups to imagine a school that provided inclusive global education and advocated for communication diversity. We met again to share our dream schools on Zoom. Phase four involved final reflections. What we valued, were surprised about in our intercultural education projects and our next steps as future educators and global citizens. Our project was aligned with SDG four the education concepts that we studied were global citizenship, inclusion, intercultural communication and multilingualism, disabilities and ableism, and multiple means and modes of communication. Hi, my name is Maddie. During my last semester with Dr. Harawas, I was given the great opportunity of interviewing an iron educator, Ana Rosa from Brazil. My partner Lauren and I learned so much from our interview about what it's like to be a special educator in another country, and more specifically about Anna Rose's own aspirations. What stood out to me the most from our interview was her passion for the inclusion of deaf students. She went into depth with us about how she has been fighting to incorporate sign language in her school's programs, regardless of the fact that the former principal and many staff members don't agree with her. Speaking with Anna Rosa was such an enriching experience, and I'm very thankful to have been able to participate. Next slide, please. Okay, Yoko So, welcome to our inclusive global schools where we advocate for and welcome communication diversity. 
In the following slides, you'll see the creative ways each project team shared their dream schools. School of the future. The first group created a video advertising a new charter school as their school of the future, urging the community to vote for their school to be established. Here's a second group's flyer for prospective parents introducing the school's We Are One concept. It focuses on student teacher ratio, support for all with or without disabilities, and a six year program to develop tolerance and acknowledgement. The third dream school is Rhode Island School of International Learning. It is one of that teaches international learning. Firetown Elementary reminded us that our school for the future can start with today with us. Group six highlighted the importance of bilingualism and how it helps people succeed in the world. In our final phase, we reflected on our intercultural education project, what we valued, what surprised us, and thoughts for the future as educators and global citizens. Hello, I'm Kite. I learned the importance of acknowledging each other. A Providence College student interviewed me via, by, via email. At first, I couldn't understand her English questions as I'm not a native speaker. So I exchanged emails for clarification. Thanks to her thoughtfulness, it became easy for me to understand and her, answer her questions. Uh, in future, if I ever meet children who are puzzled, I'd like to be like this PC student who taught me tolerance and how to acknowledge others. Um, I'm Yohei, and I'm delighted to have joined this project. I really expanded my horizons. Living in Japan, I really experienced inter intercultural encounters, so it was such a good experience for me to interview an educator in Spain and to collaborate with American students. Also, I realized I'm bilingual. I could communicate with people using not Japanese, but English. In future, I will encourage my students to become bilingual. Thank you. I'm Sandria. I have learned to admire those who are bilingual, like most of yourselves. Through this project and from personal experiences, that learning another language is not easy at all. To see so many people excel with this has encouraged me to want to do the same in order to make the world a more inclusive place for all. Hello, I'm Yuto, and I learned that it's essential to recognize diversity in the classroom, even if the needs of inclusive education is different in each school. I want to create an environment where diversity is recognized, but it's difficult for me to suddenly change the whole school. So I want my children to create a spirit of recognition of diversity in the class. Thank you so much, Iron Community, and goodbye from the United States and Japan. Um, thank you to Professors uh, Hawawas and Hashigawa and your students for an inspiring presentation. Um, next slide. Uh, I will now hand it to my classmate, uh, Starosta Alexandra, to introduce the next presentation. Hello, everyone. I would like to introduce our next presentation, which is called The Alphabets of the Peoples of the World. This one is a joint work of students under the guidance of a teacher to study the origin of the alphabets of their country and exchange information with their peers from different countries. The project goal is to get acquainted with different types of alphabets and their meaning in human life. I am pleased to introduce Alfia Sibagatulina and Maria Gurbul. Both Mrs. Sibagatulina and Mrs. Gurbul are from Russia and have been in IEARN for five years. They teach pre-kindergarten. So now I will hand it to Mrs. Sibagatulina. You're welcome. Hello, everybody. I am Alfia. Uh, I am from Russia. I, with Maria, will present the project Alphabets of the Peoples of the World. And we started this project in September 2020. Starting the ABC is necessary to know the culture of our country and uh, history. And now Maria will tell you about our project. Hello. Everybody, I am Maria, I am from Russia, and before watching the whole video, I am going to say some words about our project. The project Alphabets of the Peoples of the World is closely connected with the previous local history project 
done by my student Rima Zhukova, who unfortunately died two years ago, but we continue her work. This academic year, we started to create this project. The participants began to collect the information about the origin of the alphabet, the history of our country, and share the results of their work on online forums, on essays, presentations, booklets, posters, photos, and drawing. This work has been doing under the guidance of a teacher and a tutor. The purpose of this uh, project uh, is to get, uh, to get acquainted with different types of alphabet. As you know, there are so 36 alphabets now currently exist, and the meaning of these alphabets in our life. Tasks of the projects are to get acquainted with the materials of the origin of the alphabet, to learn the meaning of the word alphabet, to explore the variants of the alphabet and interesting facts connected with alphabets of the peoples of the world, and to develop skills for wide use of information and communication technologies to achieve the goal. The age of our participants uh, is from six to 18 years old. We are going to work over this project for a year. So we started on the 15th of September and continue it to finish, continue it now and are going to finish on the 15th of June. So you can see all possible actions which we can do. We are going uh, uh, to invite you to join us to such topics as we are doing and suggest uh, your own. Now, please watch some episodes of our work. Uh, this year, we have cooperated with Korea, with the town of Sijon. The town is a college after the founder of Korean alphabet. And our children have made the letters themselves out of buttons, ribbons, and spaghettis. Uh, we showed them our dances and uh, with wooden spoons and the dance uh, birch. Birch, the tree symbol of Russia. Next slide, please. Yes, it is our dance. Can we see? the parcel to Korea with the flag of Russia, of Russia and the doll Matryoshka, wooden spoons and of course the letters of Russian alphabet. Now, uh, it is a alphabet letters and from Korea. From Korea we also received Korean letters and alphabet, a book of ABC uh, books and uh, uh, Korean folk games and uh, bracelet for each child. It was very very cool. Uh, children and I watch, uh, watch a movie about the game, a Korean musical uh, instrument, instrument, instrument. It is very pity that Korea cannot attend the project exhibition today. Uh, now we want to say, John, our project, please. That's all. with Taiwan. Thank you very much to Missy Bagatulina and her colleague, Mrs. Gorbu, for a wonderful presentation. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to make another presentation coming round. So this one, this time, is the new project being presented is Finding Solution to Hunger. In this project, next slide, please. So Finding Solutions to Hunger. In this project, the students begin to understand the root causes of hunger in the world 
and to take meaningful action for its elimination. Aligned with the second United Nations Sustainable Development Goal to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Students collaborate with one another to find solutions. I am very much delighted to introduce Marzie Abedi, a teacher from Iran and her students. Mrs. Abedi has been in IEARN for 17 long years and teaches grade 11. So I will now hand it to Mrs. Abedi and her students. Hi, everybody. I hope you are keeping well. And uh, I wish uh, COVID-19 will end as soon as possible all over the world. My students uh, in finding solution to hunger group, Parmida, Anahita, Helia, and Camelia are very active and talented. And they have done their project very carefully and well. And now they are going to explain you their project. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here to talk to you and present to you about our project, Finding Solutions to Hunger. Uh, I'm Anahita Zerani. Hello, I'm Helia Tarmi, and I'm glad to be in your presence. Hello, I'm Parmida Jamshidi. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello, I'm Camelia Jamperi. It's an honor to be here today. Okay, uh, the purpose of this presentation is to report our main activities and our project procedure during the last three months. Um, please, next slide. Thank you. Our presentation is divided into five parts, which I support uh, one and a half part of it. We'll gladly answer all the questions at the end of the meeting. I'd like to give you some background information about very concepts and goals of our project, uh, as one of our hosts has told it previously. Uh, through this project, we've learned uh, the root causes of hunger and uh, we've thought a lot to bring awareness, build collaboration between students and awake the awareness of our society. Briefly, our activity is divided into the three parts that you can see, our forums, um, our interviews and our meetings. Uh, for the forum part, uh, we've read over 20 uh, folders and each of us read the relevant section and also shared it with other members of the group and uh, as well as commented on it. Surprisingly, during our project, we've reached charity um, and got an interview with them. Also, every week we've had an um, we've had meetings, we've planned, shared, and uh, really uh, shared the things that we've got in this project. Uh, next, please. As you can see here in this slide, there are the most important folders that we've read and at the right part of it, you can see the comments that we've shared. Thank you, that was my part. Thank you, thank you for listening to me. Now I will pass you over my teammate, Helia, please. Thank you, Anita. I and facilitators have created a folder in the form of our project for us to share what we've discovered through our investigation. Here's a list of the discussions we've created in our folder hunger general concepts and definitions, project introduction in Persian, fight for a world without hunger and eating the way the world eats. You can check them out in IAN website. Next, please. During our investigation in our region, we've discovered an inter-regional charity in Iran helping hungry people. We were delighted to be able to reach them for an interview and we've asked them a few questions by voice messages. We've asked them to introduce the charity, its key activities and contributions and the interaction with people. We also interviewed ordinary people, sending them these questions and asked them to send us the answers via voice messages. Questions like, what is hunger? How many people do they think are hungry around the world? And what impact does COVID-19 have on the condition of hunger? Uh, that was my part. I now pass you to my friend, Parmida. Thank you. Let's talk about hunger concepts and definitions. Hunger defines a short-term physical discomfort as a result of chronic food shortage. Although malnutrition includes both overnutrition and undernutrition, the focus for global hunger is undernutrition. 690 million people are undernourished. 10 million people have been added to the number since 2018. And 840 million people will be undernourished by 2030 if current trends continue. And what about our country? Iran with a score of 7.9 has a level of hunger that is low. Uh, here is an important question. Does the world produce enough food? The answer is yes. 
The world has enough for everyone's needs, but not everyone's wits. Manda Gandhi. Uh, but also, one third of food produced is lost or wasted. That's around 1.3 billion tons of food, costing the global economy close to $940 billion each year. Thank you. One of the key questions of our project is, what are the causes of hunger? I'm going to tell you the four main reasons. Poverty, it's the principal cause of hunger. It can lead to even greater poverty itself. Climate change, unstable weather patterns can lead to drought and damage to agriculture. Food and agricultural policy, lack of more productive technologies for agriculture in lower income countries. Political instability, the resulting decline of the economy reduces the value of the country's currency, leading to higher food prices. So what's the problem? Four dimensions must be fulfilled. First, physical availability of food. Second, economic and physical access to food. Third, food utilization. And the last one, the stability of other dimensions over time. Another question that might comes to your mind is, why is hunger getting worse? When people get poorer, they get hungry. Since 2009, economic slowdowns have hit many economies around the world. The past decade has also brought a rising amount of debt to many poorer nations, which has reduced growth. The COVID-19 impact, it's expected to worsen food security and nutrition. The reasons include food supply disruption, which has already happened. What can be done in order to improve the status of hunger, reducing the costs of nutritious food and ensuring the affordability of healthy diets for everyone requires significant transformations of existing food systems worldwide. Agricultural policies will need to be shifted towards a more nutrition sensitive investment, such as supporting fruit and vegetable crops. In fact, in many areas, government policy will be key from improved regulation of food industries to better policies to support nutrition education. Next, please. As our final project, we are planning to film a short documentary about hunger in Iran, especially Tehran. Our resources were IRN, WHO, and OMAR. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your attention. Um, that was a summarized form of our presentation. Um, if you'd like to see the full version of it, you can click on the link below there and have the whole part of it. Uh, thank you for listening to us. Thank you so much, dear Anahita, Parmida, Helia, and Camelia. It was very amazing. Thank you so much, all IRN organization, US IRN. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity to us. Uh, hello, I'm Christina. Thank you to Mrs. Abedi and her students for their very meaningful presentation. I will now hand it to my classmate, Vlad Dandara, to introduce the next presentation. Next slide. Uh, thank you, Christina. <clears throat> hello, I'm Vlad Dandara, and uh, I will be introducing the next presentation. Uh, coronavirus is a cross-cutting uh, uh, project. The first uh, objective is to ensure that students uh, transmit their feelings and uh, reflections uh, regarding their experiences uh, uh, since this uh, drastic change began in uh, their lives. Next slide. Uh, I am pleased to introduce uh, Carlos uh, Chufu, uh, a teacher from Peru, and his students, uh, Gina. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chufu teaches middle and secondary school and has been in IEARN for uh, 14 years. Next slide. Uh, I will now hand it to uh, Mr. Chufu and his uh, students. Hello. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, I would like also here to introduce uh, the teacher, uh, uh, Gina Bardon, who just uh, made the project with me. Gina. Hello. Uh, hello, I am friends. Mm, my name is Gina Bardon. I'm from Peru. And this project is Dire of Coronavirus, uh, Voices of the Heart. Thank you. Uh, our school has been working a lot of time ago in project-based learning. Uh, the projects that we choose have the following characteristics. Uh, first, they are mid and long-term projects. Second, they focus on the actual problem. Third, they should help to solve the problem situation. And fourth, they can be studied and seen from different points of views. 
One of these projects is the coronavirus project, which, which started to take form almost at the beginning of the pandemic in month February uh, 2019, and will continue as long as the pandemic goes. Uh, the video that we are going to present uh, here show the first two phases of the project. The third phase will be starting this month, and it will be about the math of the pandemics. Cuando la COVID-19 empezó a propagarse y empezó a afectar a Europa, supimos que era cuestión de tiempo que la epidemia iba a alcanzarnos y que debíamos prepararnos. La COVID-19 ha sido y es una magnífica oportunidad de aprendizaje, ya que es un evento que marcará profundamente no solo a los estudiantes y a sus familias, sino a la historia de la humanidad. Por ello lanzamos el proyecto Coronavirus, el cual iba a tener varias partes de acuerdo al desarrollo de la epidemia. La primera parte era la preparación para la llegada de esta epidemia. La intención de esta parte del proyecto fue que los estudiantes se preparasen para tomar las medidas de prevención necesarias. Y para ello recurrieron al recurso de hacer vídeos instructivos sobre cómo lavarse las manos, mantener la distancia y las nuevas formas de saludo, así como hacer mascarillas y protectores faciales ya que en esos días no se encontraban estos materiales en venta o eran muy difíciles de conseguir. Posteriormente, se pensó que podían hacer vídeos de cómo sería tener un pariente con COVID en casa. Desgraciadamente, con la llegada de la epidemia al Perú y con ella la cuarentena respectiva, esta etapa no se pudo realizar. Sin con jabón, sin con jabón. Ay, qué bonitas bolivias quedaron. Sí, con jabón, sí, con jabón. Vamos a lavarnos las manos con jabón. Sí, con jabón, sí, con jabón. ¡Listo! Voces del corazón. Fue la segunda parte del proyecto, la más humana y sensible. El objetivo fue entrar al corazón de los estudiantes y lograr que tengan la confianza de compartir con los demás lo que tenían dentro. ¿Qué estaban sintiendo? ¿Cómo vivían la pandemia desde sus casas? ¿Qué reflexión sacaban de estar viviendo una experiencia de tal magnitud, incluso sin entender bien lo que estaba pasando? Las actividades concretas fueron tiempo de redacción, borradores y correcciones gramaticales, hasta la presentación final del texto. Tiempo de grabación personal de cada texto para convertirlo en audio. Edición de cada audio con música de fondo propicia. Finalmente, conversión en formato podcast de cada texto inicial. Fue el cumpleaños de mi abuelito y le festejamos cantando su cumpleaños por el Zoom. Al principio me dio mucha pena, porque lo sentía lejos. Sentía que no podía abrazarlo ni decirle que finalmente esperaba palabras cariñosas que salían de mi corazón. Pero cuando ya estuvimos conectados y al verlo en pantalla... En tiempo real, a toda mi familia, me emocioné y expresé mi alegría cantándole su Happy Birthday. Y al ver cómo soplaba su velita de la torta que le habíamos enviado a su casa, fue muy emotivo para mí. Cuando volví a ver a mis familiares, valoré muchísimo poder estar con ellos, abrazarlos. Y ahora, a diferencia de antes, les digo que los quiero más seguido. Es mi forma de demostrar lo que siento que nunca vi. En mi caso personal, mi papá es camionero. Cada vez que sale para poder llevar alimentos a parte del país, todos los que nos quedamos en casa, pedimos que se les esté pronto, pan y estado. Como conclusión, puedo decir que este año ha sido mucho más en los momentos con las personas que quiero. Y también que la salud es una de las cosas más importantes con las que podemos contar. Si bien hay momentos que ya no voy a poder vivir, como mi fiesta de quince, quiero decir que poder tener a través de su vida tan infeliz. Hay una frase que admiro mucho. Mi esposa de la tormenta sale el sal. Siempre la llevo presente y es la que me guía a seguir. Ya que me la dijo mi papá. As uh, I said before, this project will uh, continue, but uh, just uh, they, they are uh, looking from another point of view. At uh, this time, it will be about the mathematics of the pandemic. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to Mr. Chufu and his students, uh, Gina, uh, for their outstanding presentation. 
Uh, I will now hand it to my classmate, Gabriel Cotella, to introduce the, the final presentation. Thanks, Vlad. Hello, my name is Gabriel Cotella, and I'm excited for the presentation, which is my classmate's presentation, the My Hero Learning Circle. iEARN Global Learning Circle provides a structure for students around the world to connect work on projects as a team. In this learning circles, students create and share stories, short videos, art, and or music to raise awareness about local global issues that they care about and share their projects with many hero and an enterspiler, an online interactive website that celebrate the best of humanity through, through essays, artwork, audio, drama, and short films. Registration for the next round of learning circles starts at the end of January, has been extended so it's possible to sign up, though January 30, 31, at the link we're now putting in the chat box. Next slide. I'm glad to introduce our teachers, Luminisa Tuliluk from Moldova, who teaches grade eight and has been in iEARN for three years. I will hand it to Mrs. Tuliluk for a brief word and then my classmates and I will present our school's work. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Today, Moldova is presenting my hero first steps proverb, uh, project, sorry, <laughs> emotions. A famous quote reads, there is no elevator to success, you need to take the stairs. So these are the steps of our stairs while becoming from novices, quite experienced eye earners. As we are young and less experienced than the other, we're trying hard to learn and do what is really important. Year after year, we have tried to participate in eye earn projects in different occasions so that we can uh, experience all kinds of projects. We have started our I Earn adventure in 2018, and now it's already 2021. This year, I would like to introduce you the team of five students who are Vlad Dandara, Sorokan Cristina, Alexandra Starosta, Florentina Scutaru, and Gabriel Cotella, whom I am going to give the floor to continue to speak about our project. The floor is yours, Gabriel. You may begin. Thank you, Mrs. Tuliluk, and to my classmates for an excellent presentation. As I have mentioned at the beginning, we have started our experience in 2018 and 19 with a team called the Northlanders. This is the team of students who participate into the project. Next slide, please. The next year, we have, we have tried to get uh, uh, in the uh, company of the Knowledge Hunters in a group of 16 students who try to expand their knowledge and experience as well. Next slide, please. This year, as I have mentioned, we have started with English Maniacs to try our best and our hand at this My Hero project. You would be wondering why English Maniacs was the name of our team. So first of all, our students were crazy about English. They were eager to learn something new and they were willing to grow, change and progress. Our partners and facilitators included people from Pakistan, Brazil, the US, of course, have we chosen my hero because today, mostly in the pandemic period, heroes are everywhere, no matter place, time, age, religion, or race. The project has taught us that heroes are simple people, but those who have big hearts, huge courage, and great ideas. Gabriel Cotelli is going to speak about his impressions of the project itself. Play the video, please. Hello. My name is Gabriel Cotella. I'm in the eighth grade from the theoretical ICM in Feminist School. Recently, my team, English Maniacs, took part in some projects associated with IFA. With the help of our tutor and teacher, Enrico Menita, we formed the team. It was hard at first trying to find the correct people for the correct job, but eventually we formed the perfect team, in my opinion. I have to admit, we had a lot of fun. It was overall a great experience, and I'm sure we had a lot of good memories. 
I want to thank the people from IPEN because they did so many good things. I don't understand how is it possible to get so many cultures, so many races, and so many countries together in one circle of learning English. My favorite project was my hero. It showed me that you don't need to be an adult or to be professional in any form to be a hero. You don't need superpowers. All you need is skill and dedication for something good. Thank you for listening to me and have happy holidays and a happy new year. Gabriel, you can add some something. Maybe you would like something to add to this. Uh, yes, this was uh, uh, before the holidays, so that's why it's Christmas themed. Okay. Um, I am, uh, to be honest, this was just amazing overall. And uh, I don't have words to describe uh, how excited I was uh, during this whole time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gabriel. And the last slide, please. Well, as you understand, we wish everyone to be just like we did. So another page has been turned, so we are happy and proud of ourselves. Well, in the meantime, we wish everyone in the period of pandemic to stay healthy and prosper. See you soon in the next kind or round of projects. And very much, I am so sorry for the emotionness of this situation because it's for the first time that we have been hosting such a major important event. We consider ourselves happy and proud and honored at the same time. So in case you, you heard some of our <clears throat> maybe not certain words, be sure we are very emotional because this is a great responsibility. Thank you very much for your attention. And as we say it in Romanian, mulțumesc. Thank you very much for your attention. Gabriel. Thank you, Mrs. Tureluk, and to my classmates for an exciting, ex excellent presentation. I will now hand it back to Yusuf to bring the exhibition to a close. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to our host today. Uh, this concludes our project exhibition. It's been a wonderful day and I want to once again thank you Luminitsa and her class of Gabriel, Vlad, Christina and Sanda. And just want to thank everybody involved in the projects today of all our groups. It's been an amazing trip around the world um, from Japan, the United States to Moldova, um, it's been a really interesting and amazing project that we've been working on for the last months and years that they have the opportunity to provide this today. And that's what the virtual project exhibition is all about. And to our audience, uh, thank you very much for joining us and for all your participation. Please, please, as you see, if you're interested in hearing more about IRN and how to join, you can see here, please visit our website at iron.org cc connect. If you're able, please support us as we continue to hold events like this and collaborate with our international network to implement formative exchange projects by texting, please text iron 44321 to receive the full link to our latest giving campaign. If you're interested in learning more about IRN and how to join, please visit our website, as I said. Finally, I would like to invite all the hosts and presenters to come back on camera and wave and say goodbye to such a wonderful, wonderful day. Let's see, do we have everyone on camera? Is there, if we can everybody unmute themselves, we'll try to unmute and come back onto camera here. I don't know if everybody sees a gallery version here. We have Sauri, yeah, Laura, thank you very much. The teachers from um, KOSKO, the amazing, amazing um, performance from Marzea Avedi's class. Thank you very much, Anaita, Camelia, Barmida. We just loved um, everything. The emotional video, um, Carlos from Peru, um, definitely touched me. It was very emotional and very lovely to see how the children in Peru and Argentina 
touched um, and we're touched by what's been happening with the coronavirus pandemic. And I just want to say um, once again, thank you for everything. This was really amazing and a lot of hard work and a lot of back and forth to get this to happen. But um, I think we were able to get it in the time perfectly. Um, does anybody want to say anything, a little feeling, something that you want to share with the rest of us? Please be feel, feel free to do that. So, as a host, for the first time, I would like to express my gratitude for support and collaboration with Yusuf and Nicole and the whole iEarn team. And I would like to apologize for my emotions and for the emotions of my students, because everything is hard at the beginning. We are novices. We are just at the beginning, but we learn fast. <laughs> we hope next hosting is going to be much better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And good luck to everyone. Stay healthy, stay calm. Don't make uh, any negative thoughts to bombard your mind. Try to stay positive, enthusiastic, and don't forget that together we are powerful. Thank you very much. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye.